the things we do to appease the gods. The things we do to appease our God. The senseless directions we follow from those who were supposed to be our leaders and those who we are told interpret the word of God. The silly rituals we do and the outdated, irrelevant traditions we follow. The acts we commit all in the name of the gods, in a futile effort to appease the gods. Yet, how do we know for sure when we succeed? Or how do we know for sure when we fail? And what, if anything, can we do about it? These gods are God which so many of us have not as yet identified for ourselves or even tried to understand. The great monuments we build in God's name, then we go and worship those same monuments diligently for the rest of our lives. As if the creator of the universe is homeless and needs a house, and the only access to him is found in that house of worship, and in none other. The things we do to appease the gods, the mindless and cruel sacrifices we make, the names we give to things, places and people to remind us of that God, the trees we plant in the name of God, then we go and destroy forests for selfish or financial gains, or we kill our backyard trees just because we do not want to clean up leaves. Who is it that we call God? Where is he? And what is our relationship with that God? Some still believe that this God lives in that special place called heaven and that he looks down upon us and checks up on us every so often. Many of us believe in our hearts that we are the sheep and he is the shepherd. So many of us see it as a slave-master relationship in which we are the all the lowly slaves and he is the demanding master, demanding that we worship him incessantly and pray an exact number of times per day, and if we do not, that we will suffer everlasting doom and gloom. Many of us see God as a grantor of wishes, so we perform the sacrifices fasting, annual religious services, Sunday worships, or even sacrificing another life, and so many other questionable things. Then we expect this God to grant us our selfish wishes and desires. The things we do to appease God. So many of us dedicate a lifetime of doing of saying, of somehow convincing ourselves that the world needs saving from the demons and the devil, and then we proclaim ourselves to be that saviour of the world. But in saving the world, O God, you, the grantor of wishes and desires, will have to grant me my wishes and desires. So many of us do not understand the idea the divine concept of selflessness. We do not understand the concept of I am, the truth in that the divinity is already within us, that we are all children of that one God, and that he already exists within every single one of us, that we are all extensions of that God. We do not understand that God is not the grantor of wishes, but that he has put us in control and we will determine whether our wishes will come to fruition or not by our own thoughts and actions. We do not understand that when we perform a sacrifice that we do not do so to appease the dictator called God, but we do it to teach ourselves discipline and to awaken God's presence already dwelling within us. Some of us perform our religious services for others selfishly, when it is supposed to be done selflessly in its entirety, not a service for which we get paid handsomely, but unfortunately we now live in a world 
where some of the leaders of churches and charities are millionaires. The things we do to appease the gods, the things we do, the sufferings we inflict upon our own children, the brutal wars we fight, the millions of innocent children of God we kill and maim because we refuse to acknowledge the fact that there is but one God. The excuses we make, the tears we cry and the tears we make others cry, all in the name of God. The curses we throw at others who do not worship our God or who do not abide by our God's wishes. The egos we seek to pacify and the terrible actions we perform to pacify those always hungry egos. The time and energy we expend to prove that our God is greater than everyone else's God. All the while conveniently ignoring the obvious fact that there is but one God, known by many thousands of names by different people in different cultures, and that there is nothing that the all-powerful God needs us to do for him. After all, he is all-powerful. Yet, us humans commit violent and wildly ungodly acts to our own people to somehow appease this demanding God of ours, all the while failing to realize that, as children of God, we have the inherent ability to show universal love, God-like love, that we have the ability to exhibit selfless and divine behavior, God-like behavior. We fail to acknowledge that we have been gifted unlimited potential, God-like potential, and we refuse to understand and acknowledge that our destiny truly is in our own hands. We are all gods unto ourselves. The divinity resides closest within our own hearts. Yet, the things we do to appease the gods someplace else.